Scarf is a brand new adventure game slash puzzle platformer developed by Uprising Studios and published by Handy Games, an offshoot of THQ Nordic, and many thanks to them for the review key. In Scarf you play a character known only as the Hero, through a story designed to reveal your destiny and really make you consider what a hero is, making you constantly second guess what you are being told by the game's story. Your dragon shaped scarf is your only ally during this tale, giving you special abilities that help you traverse the three very different worlds or biomes and overcome their various obstacles. The game includes a variety of puzzles, but they aren't overly taxing and it's a game that's certainly more relaxing than it is frustrating. Along the way you'll meet various souls known as nomads, who are the creators of these worlds. Who or what they are lies within the story itself, so I won't say any more. Regarding the gameplay, you are greeted to the game by your dragon scarf, which is both your ally and your tool during this game. As you explore the world you will gain new abilities for the scarf, such as it sprouting dragon wings, for a double jump, it turning into a glider, a swing vine, or a sling to throw you long distances. There are three biomes to explore, the ocean, desert and forest, and each has its own various sub-biomes with very unique art styles. The developers have made very good use of physics with various plants, the sand and the water, and they will all interact with your character in different ways, which is a really lovely addition to the visuals of the game. And while the game is somewhat linear, it is broken up by these larger zones where you must complete various puzzles to progress, and many of these can be done in any order, encouraging you to explore the world. One of the unique features you will find early on in the first ocean biome is the ability to walk underwater in a bubble of air making for a simple but very unique and visually impressive way to traverse the map. As with any platform game, there are various collectibles to find in the levels, and exploration to find hidden areas is strongly encouraged. Many of these will help you piece together the story of this world and its rich mythology, as well as helping you figure out the reason you were there. The gameplay as a result is interlaced with these short animated cutscenes, which have their own very unique and fantastic art style that really pushes the narrative home. The story is actually quite dark in places without making it overtly obvious, so a younger audience would also likely still enjoy the game for its visuals and relaxing gameplay. The overall feel of the game with its music and art style make me think very much of Journey, mixed in with some Mario style gameplay. Anyone who is a fan of platformers will feel right at home here, and it works well with both a controller or a keyboard and mouse. It's not trying to be a great challenge, but more a visual and music rich environment for you to take at a slower pace, and it really does do it well. Graphically, the game is stunning. Each zone looks very individual, both in terms of its color palette and the additional details, such as plants and buildings. The devs have really used the physics sensibly for interactions with the plants, the grass and sand, to name a few things as well as a couple of surprises. And not only do you get the fantastic art style of the game, but you also get these gorgeous animations that guide you through the story, and they would really make for an incredible visual novel. Sound-wise, the game's orchestral music is as delightful as it is potent. Its adaptive nature really adds to the overall feel of the game, and again strives to give each area its own unique feel. The additional background sounds often stood out to me as well-placed, such as a very typical crystalline sound when walking through a cave full of them. Things like that just add to the overall atmosphere. In summary, I really love my RTS games, I love my shooters, but growing up playing platformers, I will always have a soft spot for them. Scarf really impressed me both in terms of its gameplay and visuals. It's a very relaxing game with a story that really makes you think at times, especially when you are paying attention to both the things you find while exploring and the impressive artwork as you progress through the game. It probably throws up a lot more questions than answers at times. The game was mostly bug free for me, however I did get stuck at one point and have to reload, as a puzzle piece wouldn't move anymore. However, once reloaded it moved fine, so I just put that down to a small error, but we'll let the devs know. Now Scarf is not a long game, my initial playthrough is a little over 4 hours long, and I didn't manage to get all the collectibles in that. However, a second playthrough would certainly take less time. Now honestly, I actually think this was a very sensible length of time for the game because it allows you time to explore the storyline without dragging it out unnecessarily with extra gameplay. At the time of creating this review, I don't actually know the price of the game, but I would hope it's going to be priced around the 10 to 14 euro slash US dollar range. 
Assuming that's the case, I can highly recommend this charming puzzle platformer and will give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Scarf is released tomorrow, the 23rd of December 2021, and a link will be below for the Steam page. Thanks very much for watching, I hope this review was helpful. Please let me know what you thought of the game down below. You can see my full initial playthrough as a previously recorded two-part livestream on the channel. As always, please do smash that like button, share and subscribe, it really does help the channel out, and I'll see you all soon for another review.